Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me for another video. I'm super excited about this week's topic because we are gonna dive into the narcissistically abusive relationship. We're gonna talk about the phases and more importantly, we're gonna talk about that honeymoon idealistic phase where they put you on a pedestal, going into the devalue phase of the relationship and then the discard phase. So even if you have not been discarded by a narcissist, you can definitely benefit from this video. And if you've never been in a relationship with a narcissist, you can still benefit from this video because I'm going to talk about these different phases um, in terms of what you can expect, how you can heal from this as well. And like I said, if you've never been in a relationship with a narcissist, good for you, but you could possibly meet someone someday that has narcissistic traits and learning about this stuff is so important, not just for yourself, but also if you do have children or a niece, a nephew, a sister, anyone that you can teach this information to share this information with. Like always, if you haven't already, don't forget to hit the subscribe button down below and don't forget to click on the notification bell. That's so important. So the notification bell will inform you every time I do upload a new video so you can be informed of a new topic that I do every single week. I do also occasionally offer free coaching sessions, which I do giveaways on this channel. So if you are looking for some free coaching, definitely hit that notification bell so you can be in the loop when I do offer those free giveaways. So let's get right into this week's video. So the first phase is the honeymoon phase. You can call it honeymoon phase. You can call it falling in love phase. You can call it idealization phase. You can call it whatever you want. Basically, this is the phase where the narcissist grooms you. So this is where they are learning about you. So they're knowing and understanding where you're vulnerable. They're understanding where your wounds are. They're getting to know you because they're getting to know what are the things that I need to do to be the person that this person wants me to be so they'll fall in love with me. So why is this phase so important to the narcissist? So this is the phase where they, like I said, they're grooming you to get narcissistic supply from you. So what's narcissistic supply? That is they want you to feel, to fall in love, to trust them. They want you to feel like they're the best person ever. They want you to give them everything that they're lacking within themselves. So a narcissist is codependent. So they're depending on narcissistic supply in order to live. So why is this first phase, this honeymoon phase, so important to the narcissist? So this is their opportunity to, like I said, groom you, trap you, get you to fall in love with them, get you to trust them, and give yourself to this person so they can later either abuse you or get whatever they want out of you, which is narcissistic supply, and when you're no longer giving them what it is that they want, they'll just discard you because they're never really in relationships. They're never really emotionally involved in relationships. So a lot of these relationships with narcissists are surface level relationships because you can't ever really go deep. There's no true connection. There's no true friendship and a foundation of trust and honesty and loyalty and faithfulness and communication, all of that stuff that builds a foundation of a healthy relationship, a narcissist is incapable of doing. So in this early phase, that that's why they call it a grooming phase, because essentially what they're doing is they're playing a character. They've seen a new toy, which is you, and they think that you're going to give them everything that they need. And when you no longer are doing that, they're gonna move on very quickly. And we'll get onto that later in, in the video. Now I made a video on the different phases of a narcissistically abusive relationship. And something that's so important, and it's a question that I get so often is, well, how do I know? How do I know if someone's narcissistic? You know, how do I know if this is a honeymoon phase or if this is just, you know, we're kind of smitten with each other and this is the beginning phase of the relationship where we're all excited to see each other and he's spoiling me and I'm I'm excited to see him or vice versa and what I always tell people is you have to give a relationship time to see who a person is so you have to give a relationship time to see is this their character are they this person we have to experience life with this person we have to experience disagreements and compromising and communication and tough times we have to go through a little bit of life in order for us to see who someone is and that's the case with romantic relationships in business in friendships, it doesn't matter. So when we get too emotionally involved too quickly in relationships and we don't use logic to say, is this person right for me? Asking ourselves these questions, 
when this person does this, is this a red flag? Is this someone that's violating my boundaries? Are they using emotional abusive tactics on me? Are they trying to gaslight me? So when we're dating and we're getting to know a person, we can't get too emotionally involved because that's not healthy. That's not gonna allow you to build the relationship that you truly want. So when a narcissist meets someone and this man or woman gets too emotionally involved too fast into the relationship or they know that, hey, when I'm super charming and when I put them on a pedestal or when I just do these grand gestures or if I'm a woman and I just give myself to this man like so easily and I'm so sexual with him, you know, all of these different things that narcissists will do in order to groom their victim. When I do these things, and this is what the narcissist is thinking, when I do these things, does this woman eat the stuff up? Is she just starting to fall so in love with me? Is she starting to just trust me and give herself to me so quickly in this relationship and vice versa with a man towards a woman? Now, if you're healthy and you're whole and you have confidence and you know what healthy relationships should look like, when you start dating, Yes, of course, it's gonna feel amazing when someone sends you flowers or does nice things or does some gestures that are romantic, but grand gestures, moving too quickly in relationships, all of these things that narcissists tend to do that are red flags, if you're healthy and whole, you're gonna pin that right away because you're gonna wanna know why is this person giving so much of themselves to me when we don't really know each other yet? Why is this person rushing into this relationship or wanting to move so fastly, fast in this relationship, telling me that I'm the one, you know, sending me all these grand gestures, flowers, trips, spending money on me, all these letters of like, you're my soulmate, you're the one, I finally found you, I can't believe this, I'm so happy, I've never met someone like you before, all of these things early in the beginning phases of a relationship. And if you've ever been with a narcissist, and if you're really honest with yourself, you, you will 100% be able to say, yes, in the beginning phases, something felt off. I felt like it was rushing a little too quick. Or I felt like sometimes the things that they were doing were just like a little over the top. You felt something intuitively, but you just didn't listen. And the reason why you didn't listen is because you had emotional wounds. Either you were codependent or you had a wound inside of you and this narcissist was feeding into that wound. He was feeding or she was feeding into that codependency, that lack of self-confidence that you had in yourself. And you that's what you needed to feel whole. You needed this person to validate you, right? So that allows you to trust this person, to fall in love with this person because this person is giving you the things that you're not giving yourself because you're coming from that lack and so you fall in love with this person. So really in this phase, there's no falling in love to a narcissist. What this is is infatuation. What this is is a new toy. So this is why someone who is narcissistic, someone who has NPD can go from one relationship to the next to the next because they don't understand what being in love means. Not falling in love, being in love. They don't know what a healthy relationship should look like. They're codependent themselves and they're seeking validation in a different way. So whereas a codependent will say, I'm gonna give you and give you because I want you to validate me and give me love and that if I do all of these things for you, you're absolutely gonna love me, right? Because I'm everything to you, I'm doing everything for you, I'm being everything for you. Whereas the narcissist is the complete opposite. That if I give to you in the beginning, you'll always give to me. And I need you to give to me in order for me to feel whole inside. So that beginning phase of putting this person on a pedestal, being charming, spoiling them, all of that stuff, that's grooming to then get the codependent, I don't wanna say codependent supply, I mean, that's why it's called a narcissistic supply, but essentially it's the same thing as a codependent. The narcissist needs something from you in order for them to feel whole, just like the codependent. The codependent needs something from people outside of themselves in order to feel whole. The difference between the two is just how they go about getting their supply, their validation. Now the devalue phase is where all the abuse lives. And I talk about this a lot on this channel and I mentioned it in a lot of my videos, the cycle of how this all works from honeymoon, idealize, devalue, discard, and it just keeps going around and around and around. And if you're a person that has poor boundaries, you're gonna get on that hamster wheel and you're gonna keep going and going. If you're a person that doesn't know what a healthy relationship should look like or feel like, you're gonna stay on that cycle. 
you got cognitive dissonance, if you got trauma bonding, if you have wounds that haven't you haven't healed yet, you are going to stay stuck in this cycle. It's very hard to get out of this cycle when you have all of this trauma that's living with inside yourself that you haven't healed and overcome. Now, the devalue phase is just that. This is where the narcissist has groomed you. You have fallen in love, you trusted this person, perhaps you're married now, perhaps you're living together, perhaps you've had a child. So the narcissist always needs to hook you in such a way that you're dependent on them. So because they know you very, very well, they know that you don't give up on relationships easily, that you're a very loyal and faithful person. You're not just gonna walk away from a relationship. So when they know that about you, and when perhaps you're engaged and they know that chances are you're probably not gonna end this engagement when you are married to this person. Chances are, first year of marriage, you're not gonna walk away, right? You just got married. You're gonna really work at this relationship like any person would. When the narcissist knows this or knows that if I do certain things, if I abuse this per person in a certain way, that they keep coming back that they deal with my abuse, that they don't have boundaries, that they let me do what I want. And when they get upset from something that I either did or said, doesn't really matter because they're gonna call, you know, cry out wolf and they're not gonna actually do anything about it. When the narcissist then knows that about you, this is where the cycle keeps going and going and going. So the devalue phase is where all of the emotional abuse abusive tactics live. It's where the physical abuse lives. It's where maybe the sexual abuse lives. All of the abuse lives in that phase right there. So this is where they are going to shame you. They are going to manipulate you. They are going to make you feel bad for how you feel and what you think. So this is when they're not gonna respect your opinions. This is when they don't know how to compromise and it's their way or the highway. This is where they're gonna tell you that you're too sensitive. This is when, like I said, the physical abuse is gonna happen. This is where the verbal abuse is gonna happen. This is when they're gonna start making you doubt who you are. This is where the, the mental abuse takes place. This is when they start kind of just hammering away at who you are until you have absolutely no confidence left and you're just sitting there feet like dying for some attention again right so and you're gonna keep trying you're gonna keep working harder so the more that they beat you down the more you're gonna come up and say but I remember this person in the beginning of the relationship where is this person I know this person is here because it was so good in the beginning and they did this and that and it must be me I must be doing something wrong for this person to not want to give me the things that they gave me in the beginning I must be the problem I must be the crazy one I must be bad right I must be a nag I must be jealous all the time, right? Instead of saying, hey, when you're talking to other women like that and you're flirting, or when you're around these men and you're talking to them in such a way that you're always putting your hands on them, it makes me feel uncomfortable, right? There's no, oh, I absolutely understand how that can make you feel uncomfortable. I'm so sorry, I won't do that. It'll just be, well, you know, you're just jealous and insecure, or, you shouldn't feel that way. Maybe if you were more social and got in the conversation, you wouldn't feel that way as well, you know? This is when we start trying to set boundaries, but our boundaries, because we don't know how to enforce them and because we come from that lack, the narcissist doesn't care. They're just gonna walk over all the boundaries that you're trying to set, all the things that you're trying to say on how it, something makes you feel and what you think, and they're gonna make you feel bad for who you are and if you aren't secure with who you are they're gonna win they're gonna beat your confidence down and then that's when the discard happens because you're no longer the shiny new toy you've been used and abused and you're not fun to play with anymore so you're no longer giving me what it is that I need so sometimes in the devalue phase what happens is the codependent will find strength will get beat down so much that they'll say, wait a minute, something's going on here and I don't feel like myself. Maybe I'm depressed. Maybe I have mass amounts of anxiety. Maybe I'm having panic attacks. Maybe I just know that I don't like the way you're talking to me anymore and things have to start changing, right? And this is when you start holding the narcissist accountable and they don't like that. So when that starts happening, where maybe you're starting to build your strength within yourself, a discard could very well happen where they're either moved on and cheating and lying and things like that start to happen behind your back because 
they don't want to be held to a standard. They don't, there's no accountability. There's no responsibility for their part in the relationship. They just want to come and go as they please. They want everything from you in terms of narcissistic supply. And you're supposed to be just so grateful that you're in a relationship with this person that you should just take whatever I give. That's basically what the narcissist is saying. So when you start, now if you haven't started gaining that strength and maybe you're just so weak and fragile and your confidence is so low, again, that's not appealing to a narcissist, right? Because the narcissist has abused and abused you so much that you're not gonna give anything to me because you're just laying there, you know, half dead basically, depressed, having panic attacks, you know, not having the confidence that you once had and you're not fun anymore. And again, the discard's gonna happen and they're gonna move on. You know, the reason why I make these videos is number one, to educate you. I wish people would watch these videos that haven't experienced these things before. I wish these things were taught in school systems. I wish that we just learned the stuff growing up, right? That we really understood what abusive relationships look like, not just in romantic relationships and friendships as well, right? What a toxic friend looks like and what they sound like, what manipulation is, what gaslighting is, all of that stuff. I, I hope we get to the point where we really start learning these life lessons in school. You know, history and math and chemistry and all that stuff. Yeah, it's great, it's important, but these are the tools that we should be learning. And if you're watching this, it's just as important to understand these phases to maybe prevent yourself from dating another narcissist or a psychopath or a sociopath or you know healing getting validation that like yeah that's what I went through this is what it was for me this is how I felt and I was depressed in this relationship and this person manipulated me all the time and understanding when people do this what phase of a relationship are you in being able to spot when someone does this stuff to you. Again, no, it doesn't matter if it's a coworker, a friend, or a romantic relationship, when people use these tactics on you. And, and I think emotional abuse is so, so important to learn and understand. And if you have been through a discard, the most important thing that I can, I can't even stress enough in this video is it had nothing to do with you. And it is an extremely, painful painful process to go through it's a painful thing to have to go through in your life especially when you loved someone when you love someone and you trust someone and you can look back and you see that it meant nothing that this person was incapable that you were in love with a fantasy and how could you leave and just leave me like that the way you did and discard me or how could you cheat on me the way you did or have an affair behind my back for as long as you did when you go when you experience that that's true true heartbreak and it takes time to heal it's such an emotional roller coaster and every day is going to feel different there are some days where you're going to feel very hopeful there are some days where you're going to feel depressed there are some days where you're going to be very happy some days you're going to cry like you're going to get confused then you're going to get clarity it, you're you're going to be all over the place but i promise you you will get to a point as long as you keep doing this type of work as long as you work on yourself every single day you will get to a place where you will heal you will get to a place where you will be hopeful for the future and excited for what's to come in your life no matter what your age is no matter what your situation is that's the best place to be and that's when you can look at the person and say thank you for doing what you did to me because you forced me to become a better version of myself you forced me to grow you forced me to experience such pain that I had no choice but to get up every single day and work on myself as hard as I possibly could. So I hope that this video has helped anyone out there that has been through a discard, is going through a discard, or even if you've just been in a narcissistically abusive relationship. If you have any comments, please leave them down below. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you next week.